Hi and welcome to my workshop. My name is Tomasz and you're watching Casual DIY channel. In today's video I'm going to be making a jig for my miter saw. This jig will help me to create nice accurate cuts for some picture frames. So let's get started. The main materials I'm going to be using for this project are all reclaimed, okay? It's a laminated chipboard, it used to be a part of a bed or something, and I've got two boards that are long enough and I think will do absolutely fine for this particular project. They're nice and flat, that's very important, and straight. However, if you've got access to nice uh, plywood, about 18 millimeters, that would be even better. However, that's what I've got. That's what I'm going to be using. First of all, we need to rip it down to the correct sizes. Now one of the boards, I will leave it as is, and the dimensions of it are 136 centimeters long and 22 centimeters wide. And as I mentioned, both of the boards are 18 millimeters in thickness. As you can see, the other board, I'm just ripping it down on my table saw. That part will be the fence for this whole jig. And the dimensions for the second board, obviously the length is the same and it's going to be 10 centimeters wide. With my router table, I'm going to create a channel for the T-tracks. Several passes to get the correct depth, so the T-track will be flush with the top of our jig. At the same time, I'm going to make another channel on the other end of this board. It will be a little bit further away, probably about 8 centimeters away from the edge. That will allow me to add a T-track for clamping. But I'll show you that a bit later on, how it all works. The channel I'm cutting in this piece, that's the fence of our jig, is to accommodate a ruler that I'm going to stick into it. I just want the ruler to be flush with the fence itself. With the fence and the base now sorted, it's time to connect them. As you can see, I'm just using some corner clamps to hold everything in place, making sure that the fence to the base is at perfect 90 degrees. I'm just going to pre-drill, countersink and drive in some screws to hold everything together. Now it's time to mount the base onto my miter saw. And as you can see in the fence, the original fence of my miter saw, I actually do have some holes. I'm going to utilize those holes to attach the jig to the saw. I want to use some bolts to actually make sure everything's nice and stable. So I need to make sure that the heads of the bolts are flush with the fence of the whole jig and for that I'm going to use a force snippet and as you can see I can now attach my jig to the mitre saw uh, with some bolts and obviously some nuts to secure everything in place. Now if you don't have that facility in your fence just use some clamps you know you can just clamp it down to your existing fence and it will be absolutely fine just make sure it's in a nice and stable position. And now it's time to attach the T-tracks. With the jig in place, it's now time to make the 45 degree cut. This will allow me to put the measuring tape on the fence of the jig as well. Unfortunately, my OCD is gonna go wild on this one as <laughs> the whole numbers that will be upside down. I actually don't have a reverse um, tape for this, but hey, you know, I'm gonna use what I've got. Uh, I want the zero to start at the blade side. So unfortunately, that's what I've got. That's what I'm going to be using. Now, if you probably have noticed, <laughs> the channel for the tape, the measuring tape wasn't long enough. So I had to disassemble everything and get the channel a little bit longer. So be careful and pay attention to what you're doing. Now it's time for the tape itself. It's a ruler. Uh, it does have a self-adhesive. It's made from some sort of a thin metal. It's actually not paper, so the quality is quite good. Uh, it's dead on zero there. So let's whack it on. Okay, now it's time to create a stop block that will help us in repetitive and accurate cuts. Uh, I'm using plywood for this. I've got a sandwich of two 18 millimeter pieces. However, it doesn't have to be that thick. It's just a scrap I've got lying about in my workshop and I just want to use it. In our stop block, I'm just gonna pre-drill a hole. It's gonna be eight millimeters in diameter as that's the size 
of the T-bolt I've got. I decided to pre-drill two holes, okay? I want the stop block to be right at the fence. So having two holes will allow me to have the orientation of the stop block in either of the positions. So if I need to swap the orientation of the stop block, I'm straight away covered in both ways. So that's one of the things you can think of and improve before you actually start making this jig. However, in most cases, the stop block in my case will be in this orientation as you can see now. Okay, let's make some test cuts. All right, so how do you actually use this jig? Well, the line where the blade's gonna go, that's covered by the zero clearing fence and the base itself. We are starting on the right hand side and we are making the first cut. And that's why this tree track comes in super handy as the board itself will be a little bit longer at this stage. So you can quite easily clamp it down and secure it in place without any hassle. And now you can be sure the board it will not shift on you, it's going to stay where it needs to be. Okay, we've got one angle sorted, now it's time to use the stop block on the other side. It all depends how big the frame is going to be. In this particular case, I'm not going for any specific size. However, you've got the ruler just over here to indicate where you are exactly. So that will be very helpful. You've got a sharp edge just over here to utilize that as well. I'm going to go for seven centimeters. That's going to be just here. Lock it in place. That's my stop block sorted. And now the board itself, we're going to flip it like so. And both of the angles meet in this position here and everything's nice and stable and I can secure it with a clamp on the other side just like that and I can make a nice precision cut. With the stop block in place we're going to make another cut. This time we're going to flip the board again just like so. Boom. Now let's have two longer sides, I'm going to go to 15, flip it over, put it against the stop block and we'll make a cut. Okay, we've got all our pieces, let's put it together, just like so. And we've got Perfect mitres. And there you go guys, nice and simple jig to create some really solid picture frames in a quick and easy manner. Now why did I actually go that long? Uh, from the zero to the end I've got 97 centimeters. That's because I want to do some frames for posters which are obviously a little bit bigger. So this will fit my needs absolutely perfectly. However, if you want to do uh, picture frames at normal sizes, you definitely don't need the jig to be that long. And as you've seen, having on the right hand side the ability to clamp something down is absolutely fantastic. The jig doesn't have to be too long to the right hand side. You just need the clamping facility as you got here. Plus, um, you know, having the ability to read how big your frame is straight away. In the very near future, I'm going to be releasing a video on how to make a picture frame for a specific sized art. So if you've got um, already a poster or anything like that that you want to frame, I'm going to show you step by step how to use this jig um, to make uh, the frame itself to fit perfectly the art piece you want to frame. So that will come in the very, very near future. Plus, there will be a video on a clamping jig to put the frame together and how to reinforce it so you've got a nice and stronger joint here. As if you were just to glue the mitres as they are now, it's not gonna be a very strong connection here. So I'm gonna show you that in a future video, how to reinforce that and add a bit more interesting look to your picture frame as well. I hope you enjoyed this little jig. If you did, drop me that like button down below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well. Now I do have a lot more cool videos uh, where it comes to upgrading your workshop, making cool jigs, everything like that, woodworking projects and I've got some 
absolutely fantastic playlist just for you. Have a look around, click on those, maybe a video will pique your interest. So I hope to see you on those videos there. Take care.